Hi everybody, this is Cindy. It is Monday, May 28th. It is Memorial Day, late at night. And I'm back to do an update on how to do a larger project with Sticky Board. A couple of people had they asked, you know, would I please show how to use a bigger project and finishing uh, a piece on a larger scale. So I'll be happy to do that with you. Uh, I did finish stitching Red, White, and Blue by Lizzie Cade. I started this on Saturday and I finished it today. It's a pretty quick stitch. And what a great way to remember Memorial Day. And it's beautiful Red, White, and Blue. I definitely decorate with Red, White, and Blue this time of year. All the way through 4th of July. And then I usually switch it out in August. Uh, this size comes exactly as this size. And this is going to be perfect for this project. So it's already pre-cut on one sheet. And I will show you. So that's 5 inches. And going the other way. 5 by 7. That's your size here. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I played around with different fabrics and um, the buttons I added on this piece, these are called Sprinkles by just another button company. They're really tiny and I'll bring that in close so you can see what they are. I added a star and two hearts and I changed the pattern a tiny bit because I wanted to add some buttons on there. Now I did pick, this fabric came with, this was a full kit, so this fabric it's going to go on the bottom like that. And I decided this was going to be the background uh, fabric for this piece. So I'm going to layer it. And then this piece, I purchased this over a year ago. It was on clearance for $5. Already a hanger. And what I'm going to do is be mounting that piece on here. And this is going to be a wall hanging. I really thought about Finishing this into a pillow, but I really wanted to use this piece, and it's just a nice piece that I will have. And I do have a patriotic room, so once I put that away, I just put everything back in the patriotic room, so it really is out all year long. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut and sew this piece on the bottom of the piece. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so what I did is I, I just sewed this piece on. I trimmed this up to the amount that I wanted between the fabric and this new fabric here. And I just sewed it together and I just pressed it down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this tiny rick rack in the middle to bring it together. Now I played with many different ribbons and fibers and that's what I like to do in my design process. Um, it is fun for me to design and figure out how I want to finish my project. So I did pick this but like I had a ribbon and I put that there and it, it was too bright it didn't match and that's what you do. You just take different things and you play with it and see which one uh, looks best. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to attach this and I'm going to show you how I do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I have a toothpick and I used Aileen's Tacky Glue and I'm just going to take a little bit on the Q-tip, on the Q-tip, <laughs> on the toothpick and I'm basically just going to be putting it on the line. So that when I press down the trim, it will stick to that. And this just makes a very fine line. When you're squirting it with a bottle on something this thin, it's going to be too thick of a line. So I just find that using a toothpick is super helpful. And I'm just going to finish that up. Okay, as you can see, I did a very fine line of the glue. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trim and I'm just going to press that down. And 
and just take paper cloth and this dries clear. And just dab it down. As you can see, I'm just going to let that dry for a couple of moments. You can't see any glue. It's a very fine line. And I'm just going to put that aside to let that dry for a couple of minutes. While that is drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my background fabric and I'm going to attach it to the sticky board. So I'm just going to uh, peel the sticky board back. That is the sticky side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay my fabric on there and press it down. And as you could see, when you fold it over, uh, that's going to be your uh, background piece there. Now there are several ways that you could finish the back of this fabric. You can lace it, you can hot glue it, or you could use Aileen's glue. I have done it all three ways. But I'm going to show you with the Aileen's glue. And the reason why I'm showing the glue is because some people don't like using a hot glue gun. And hot glue does dry extremely fast and this is definitely a more forgiving process. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a line here, a line here, and we're just going to do these two sides first. And I just press it down, give it a nice good press there, and that'll dry in a minute or two. I'm just going to go over and I'm going to do the other side. I'm just going to press that down. Just let that sit there for a moment. Nailing's glue dries pretty quick, but it's definitely not as quick as a hot glue gun. So now we're going to go over. And you want to, this is the side when you're doing this, is when you're, you want to get your corner as tight as you can on this. So what I do is I just kind of play with it first. I take a look at everything. I usually go in from the corners first, and then I would go in like that. So what I do is I play with it first before I, you know, put any type of glue down. So what I'm going to do is I don't go too close to the edges. I just go in here. And what I'm going to do is go in from the corner. See how I make it really tight there. And then I'll fold it in going down. I'll go over to this corner and fold it in. And then I will just press the rest of it down. And just press down on that. And as you can see, the corner is very, very tight. So I'm going to go around. And we're going to do the other side. And I'm going to just do the same process. I don't put the glue too close to the edge. But like I said, this is a very forgiving process. So I always go by the corner and I always go in on the diagonal first. Go in on the diagonal. Then I'll press and go in. I do the two corners first. It's kind of like wrapping up a, a Christmas box or a package. And it, it's practice. Everything is practice. And once you're doing it for a while, you will get the hang of it. But it is a forgiving process. So just remember, it's always a very forgiving process. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to cut off some XFX fabric here. You could do that. Don't be afraid to cut off excess bulk. And I will do that from time to time. You don't have to. 
Uh, some spots you may want to, some spots you may not want to. And to me, I took out a lot of the bulk by trimming that up a little bit. So when you turn it over, you have a perfect background piece. Now this piece is the same exact size, so I want to cut that down a little bit and this piece over here, my finished piece, is going to be pressed onto here. So we want to press it in a little bit and you could do a quarter of an inch, you could do a half inch and if you do a half inch it's that much. I'm going to do a half an inch around, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this a half inch around. So all, all four sides, I'm going to be cutting off a half an inch. Like I said, I have a rotary cutter specifically for sticky board only. Okay, so what I did is I cut the piece, and now I'm just going to place it on top of this is my background fabric. And then that is going to be on here. So I like how that looks. Um, I did measure it out. Half inch was too much, so I actually cut a piece to a quarter inch. You have to play with your pieces to see what you like. It was too much fabric showing for me. I only wanted a little of the background. It was too much. So what I'm going to do now is I have my piece cut. And now I have my piece that I'm going to be mounting onto this board. So, of course, you do have tons of extra fabric here. And I'm going to play with this to see how I like it. So I'm going to do it to about that. I have tons of extra fabric, so I'm going to trim that down a bit. It's too much. You don't want too much there. Too much excess. You'll be playing with a whole lot of fabric. So I'm just going to trim that up a little bit. I'm just going to trim the sides down a little bit. Too much excess there, too. Now you do want to give yourself extra room, but you don't want too much excess fabric to deal with on the back of the piece.
So as you can see, I trimmed that up quite a bit there. Now it's a lot less to deal with. So on the piece, sorry about that. Just gonna take a look and see. where I want that. And you just have to play with it. Like I said, this process is, is extremely forgiving. Everybody's own personal taste is going to come into play also on this. So I like how that looks. I'm liking how that looks. So what I'm going to do is just turn that over there. And I'm just checking my measurements and things like that. Okay. Okay, so what I've done is I placed the fabric down and I'm going to start to peel back the sticky and I'm just going to press and pull, press and pull, press and pull as I go along, press and pull, press and pull. It's very hard to do while you're doing this on camera with just basically one hand here. As you could see. That's all lined up to how I want that, and it's really pretty straight. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with the Aileen's glue. Now the sides I'm doing first are the side pieces because it has the uh, trim here. And I'm just going to let that dry for a moment. I turn that around and now I'm going to do the other side. Now with, with this bulk here, you do want to hold that down for a moment so that just gets a little... And that's going to dry for a moment. Okay, I'll let that dry for a moment, and I'm just going to trim up the excess fabric a little bit. I don't want to have too much to deal with. There. And now you want to get those tight corners again. So like I said, I'm not going to get too close to the edge. But I'm just going to put that there. And I always put the corner in on a diagonal first because that gives me a tight, tight corner. And then, of course, I'm going to fold in on the edges. I'm just going to let that dry for a moment. As you can see, the corners are really straight and even. Now I'm going to do the other side. Same thing, get that angle on the corner. The angle on the other corner, and then I fold, I fold in. I press as I go. 
press as I go. And I'm just going to let that dry for a moment. As you can see, the corners are really, really sharp. As you can see on the back, I trimmed it up a little bit. And as I was going, I, I do check the front end. Really, that's super beautiful, super perfect. This, this fabric, this linen, is called Heroic. It's a beautiful fabric. Now, there's my piece. That's the background piece. And place it on there. And... It really is. It's going to be a beautiful background. I love it. It really looks really good. And then that will get put onto this piece. Now, I do recommend when you're first starting out that you start with the Aileen's glue and not the um, glue gun, the hot glue. The hot glue dries really super quick and I do recommend doing it this way first to get practice because it's more forgiving. You could still pull this apart right now if you wanted to. It does need a little time to dry. To finish this piece up though, once you have your pieces to the size and where you want to place it, I am going to be doing hot glue on the four corners here and then the hot glue on the back to attach it to here. And I'm going to show you that now. Now I'm going to hot glue the four corners. Just hold that for a minute. Hot glue dries super, super quick. Okay, that is hot glued on there, people. That ain't going nowhere. You can see the corners. There's no excess. You don't want to get too close to the corners. Now, let me look at my piece and see. So that looks good to me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hot glue those pieces. This is a really long piece and it's not gonna fit on the counter, so I'm turning it this way so you can fully see it. As you can see, there's a hanger already on this. And that'll hang, it, it really is. Uh, it came out really good. It came out exactly like I had wanted it to come out. I hope that is helpful to somebody. Everybody's asking, well, how do I turn the fabric under? How do I do it? I hope that is helpful for someone. Happy stitching, everyone.